Hi friends, now in today's episode of Unplugged, I will look at a radiological case and I will try to show you how we really look at a case in a, a real life radiology reporting system. And I, I feel that this is a very typical case that I will discuss with you today, which is very typical to be asked for radiology residents as well. So I feel that the discussion that we will do today will be of value both for you know people appearing for a uh, PG entrance exam, but even more for residents as well. Because what is the difference between an image that we show to you in a medical student level and what is the difference between when we show it to you at a resident level? At a medical student level, we usually select a key image for you and we show you that key image which has a very classic finding. On the other hand, when we show a case to a resident, our goal is to show you a series of images and you have to spot the finding yourself and then uh, find out the differentials and find out how you know to approach the case so the difference between a medical student looking at the images you have to look at a one classic image and uh, pick up the diagnosis or the sign that we are showing to you as a resident you are supposed to know the approach to the entire case so I will try to approach this patient. This is a two-year-old child. We are looking at a chest X-ray and a chest CT. I will try to show you the entire image file that how radiologists actually look at an image. Let me zoom the X-ray chest for you. Okay, this is the X-ray chest in front of you, two-year-old child. What do you think? I am able to see that the left lung of this child is looking hyperlucent. I hope you are able to see it looking more black than the right side. It's more more hyperlucent. And usually the one third of the heart is towards the right of the spine, two third is here. If I notice this is slightly pushed to the other side. So I feel there is some mediastinal shift. There is a hyperlucent left hemithorax. That is what we are looking at on a chest x-ray. But although this area is hyperlucent, you are still able to make out the vascular markings between below it. Although they look attenuated, but you are able to see the bronchovascular markings here. So you know when you look at a unilateral hyperlucent pneumothorax, one of the possible causes include, includes pneumothorax. But in a child where I'm not really looking at pneumothorax here, I'm looking. I'm able to see the bronchovascular markings. I cannot see any pleural line. Uh, I would say that you know one of the important causes here would be a Seaver James McLeod syndrome, which is a post-infectious bronchiolitis obliterans, where a post-infectious obliteration of the bronchus is leading to hyperinflation that is possible on this x-ray but you never know till the time you see the CT scan so as a resident now the next step that you will see will be a CT scan let me show you a CT scan here let me zoom the image hmm? and we are going to look at a contrast enhanced CT of the chest in both in the mediastinal window as well as in the lung window so let us begin by looking at the lung window of this patient okay so let's see the lung window so as I go down, I am sure you are able to see this as I am going down. Okay. So I hope you can see that we are again able to, I am zooming the image for you, make out this, that same difference here that the left thorax is hyperlucent. And look at the, you know, the kind of bronchovascular, the vascular markings here and look at the attenuation of the vascular markings here. But you don't see any clear-cut pneumothorax. I hope you can see there's no plural line, there's no air uh, separate. It is it's the lung in itself which looks hyperinflated. So what could be the reason for this? But let's look at, before we you know, start looking at reasoning, let's look at the mediastinal window as well. So as you go down in the mediastinal window, this is the area of the trachea. And now you can see the trachea is about to divide in the carina. You can see the right bronchus. And what do you see here? A large fluid filled area which is non enhancing. It is not taking up any dye, no calcium, a fluid filled area sitting at the carina. So we can say a subcarinal cystic lesion is seen here. And let's try to trace out the left bronchus. This is where you have the left bronchus. And it looks as if the left bronchus, even the pulmonary bifurcation, it appears stretched by the cystic lesion. So probably we are dealing with a cystic lesion sitting at the carina which is stretching the left bronchus, probably partially obstructing it. Maybe that partial obstruction is explaining the hyperinflation of the lung that we saw and that stretching of the pulmonary artery again reflects the nature of the cystic lesion. Maybe probably we are dealing with a cystic lesion which is under some tension. It is like tense cystic lesion here. Now what is the most important differential diagnosis that you will keep here? Okay, so we have been able to explain the findings. We are able to see 
So what could it be? Uh, this classic, this is one of the classic locations of a bronchogenic cyst. A bronchogenic cyst is typically, you know, a problem in the abnormal budding of the bronchial tree. We may consider it as a part of uh, bronchopulmonary foregut malformation uh, that we see. It's typically seen in the middle mediastinum. The typical locations are maybe the uh, paratracheal location or the subcarinal or the hilar. It can be intrapulmonary as well. So in this patient, we are able to see a subcarinal cystic lesion. These cystic lesions can communicate with the airway as well. But uh, what is going against the airway communication in this particular patient? You don't see any air within it. It's clearly fluid filled. There is no air within the lesion. So had it been a, you know, a, did, did it have some airway communication? We would have seen some air in the lesion. This is purely a cystic lesion sitting at the carina with some narrowing or some obstruction causing which was mimicking Siever James syndrome on the x-ray chest but on a CT we know this is a bronchogenic cyst may be leading to, to some partial obstruction of the left main bronchus leading to uh, that obstructive hyper hyperinflation of the left lung that we see here so that is you know how you would get a case as a resident now what is the difference between a resident looking at an image and a Okay, now let me create a MPR for you. Let's create a coronal MPR. Now, as a resident, you are supposed to look at the multiplanar reconstructions as well. They will give you some idea. You can you can actually appreciate the hyperinflation in this particular image. And when I go down at the level of the carina, let me change the window to the lung window and to the mediastinal window. This is that cystic lesion that we saw in the level of the carina you can see the right bronchus and you can see how it is obliterating the or partially obliterating the left bronchus and that was the reason for that this is the uh, coronal reconstruction also so this is all that you can appreciate in a real dicom image and the difference is as an undergrad they would actually show you only one image showing a tracheal bifurcation with a cyst at the carina you are able to make it out but as a, as you go grow older you are appearing for an md exam or a dnb exam you would have such cases in the as a short case in the exam this is a typical mediastinal cyst that they will ask you in the exam i hope you enjoy the discussion that we have done and do let me know in the comment section if you want me to do any other cases for you you know because i feel that uh, the learning is a continuous bell-shaped curve. You know, it's, it's nothing like this is just one image or two images. It's like you have to learn how real in in real life how radiologists are looking at an image, and that gives you the insight into the entire anatomy and how we scroll through the images on a workstation. I hope you enjoy this episode of Unplugged. Do let me know if you want me to do any more cases, uh, any other cases in particular. I wish you all the best. <laughs>